up, y'all? Welcome to Throttle Only. My name is Nate. This is a Jeep Grand Wagoneer. Let's check it out. So here's a quick look at this nice rectangular key fob here. We have lock and unlock buttons, a remote start, trunk lift gate button, lower suspension, and an alarm button. All right guys, so I'm in front of this beautiful Jeep Grand Wagoneer. We're gonna start by talking about the hood here. This hood looks very nice. It's gonna be covered in this white color and has a contrast of black all throughout this vehicle, but specifically on this hood, it has two body lines that kind of direct your attention into this vent that's on the very back portion of the hood. And honestly, I think that looks really good. So now as we come off this hood and make our way down to the front of the vehicle, you'll notice there's this giant Wagoneer badge that looks pretty good. It's covered in chrome as well as this grill, very Jeep-esque grill. And it does have a front camera in the center there with a washer since if you want to off-road with this thing, apparently you can. And then the headlights look very good as well. They're going to be to the sides of this grill and it just flows very nicely. Even though I'm not a fan of chrome, I think that the chrome works really well for this vehicle. So let me show you these headlights. They're absolutely beautiful at night. They have LED projector headlamps, as well as LED turn signals that turn amber when that is turned on. And just your standard daytime running lights will also be this beautiful LED color. And down below from that, there are also some fog lights that are LED and they will turn on depending on if you turn the wheel specific way, or you could just leave them on with the fog light button. So now as we make our way down a little bit further, there's some blacked out grill mesh pieces that I think flow really well with this vehicle. And in the center, there are all the technology for the radar cruise control. And down from that, where your license plate is, just to the side of that, this is a very nice textured material. I'm not really sure what it is, but again, that looks super good. And the last styling piece up front here that I wanna mention is this chrome that is underneath the license plate. And it actually will extend just a little bit below the vehicle, kind of like a skid plate. So now as we make our way to the side of the vehicle, let's talk about these 20 inch machine aluminum wheels with Baltic gray pockets. I think they look really good on this vehicle. It might look a little bit better in black. And then above that, the fender flares are pretty flush to the vehicle and they are body colored. In the front here, we do have two 75 tires and that's gonna be wrapped around all four wheels because this has four wheel drive. Then as we make our way back, you're gonna have this giant Grand Wagoneer logo on the side with this American flag. I think that looks pretty cool. This also is gonna have some running boards. So as you open the door, or put your hand behind the handle, the running boards will go ahead and present themselves so you can step on into the vehicle. And something to mention about these door handles, I think they look very good. It has this black and this white contrast that just works very well. And these mirrors also have the works as well. On the outside, there's an LED indicator. There is a small fish eye mirror on the inside, as well as a blind spot monitoring system. They fold and the mirrors are also turned down when you turn into reverse. So as we take a second and just appreciate the silhouette here on this Jeep Grand Wagoneer, we can see that there is a two-tone theme kind of going on here with the white down below and then the top being black. I think that looks really cool. The only thing I don't like are these chrome pieces that extend all the way through to these windows here. I think that just looks very weird, but you can't really notice it too much since this car is in white. And then at the top here, there's also some pretty nice roof rails that you can attach things to if you would like to. And lastly here, you might notice some of the body lines on this Jeep Wagoneer. I think it looks very good, gives it some nice dimension and contour. And on the other side, there is a fuel door. So this massive SUV has air suspension. Currently it's in its highest mode. Let me show you the different ride heights. All right, so now let's take a look at the rear exterior styling here. We're gonna start with the roof where you can kind of see the shark fin antenna poking out. And then you have this very nice black and white contrast that we saw on the side. And this giant rear glass is surrounded by this chrome strip. Again, not too much of a fan that. And then as we make our way down, you have another Grand Wagoneer logo that looks pretty good. Tail lamps look super nice. Probably my favorite styling piece on this vehicle. They are sequential and they look super nice at night. This also has a reverse camera with a washer and then some nice textured material where the license plate is and this area is just wrapped in chrome. And then probably the smallest badge I've ever seen, especially on such a giant vehicle. On the other side, it says Quadra Drive 2. 
And then lastly, there's just a nice gloss black bumper here, just kind of mixed with some aluminum chrome look as well. So there are five trims available for the Wagoneer lineup. The lowest trim is the Grand Wagoneer, which is weird to me. I would think that that would be the top trim, but whatever. The next level is Obsidian, then the Series 2, Series 3, and lastly, the Series 3 Obsidian. So let's review the specifications. So this is the white and black two-tone color. The starting price for the 2023 Jeep Grand Wagoneer is around 91,000 US dollars. And yes, you can still buy these new on Jeep's website. It's kind of weird. So under the hood, it has a 6.4 liter V8 engine that pushes out 471 horsepower, 455 foot-pounds of torque, and it has four-wheel drive and an eight-speed automatic transmission. In the city, it gets 13 miles per gallon, 18 on the highway and 15 combined. And the gross weight is about 7,700 pounds. And it has a towing capacity of nearly 10,000 pounds. So let's take a listen to what this family SUV sounds like since it has a V8 underneath the hood. And here's a look at this 6.4 liter V8 engine. You can see just how pushed back this engine is. And let's take a look at where it sits here in relation to these front wheels. It looks like it's almost right on top of it. So now we're gonna go ahead and look at the trunk space here in this Grand Wagoneer. So you can actually use your foot to open up the trunk. I'm gonna show you what that looks like right now. And to open it for you right now, I'm just gonna use the key fob here. I'm gonna double tap this button right here. And it opens right on up. So you can manually close this if you would like using this handle here. Otherwise, if you want to close it, you'll have to use this button right here. And you can also hold to set it at a specific height as well. You can see there are a bunch of hooks right here and some more hooks on the other side as well. And here is the control panel to put down all of these seats under this area here with the cargo net taken off. If you lift up the carpet, there's a small hidden compartment right here. You can store items. The third row is fully electric assisted and the second row is only partially. And here's the second row. So there is a lot of space here in this Wagoneer with both the second and the third row folded down. But in the center here, in the rear, you still have this control panel. We'll go over that in just a second. And then from back here, you can also see all of these sunroofs. From the second row, you can also lower the rear seats by using this touch panel right here. So in order to access the third row, you have to push this button right here. And then when you do so, this seat will move forward and that'll give you enough room to enter into this third row here. All right guys, so I'm sitting in the third row here in this Wagoneer and these seats are so comfortable. And surprisingly, I actually have enough room as a full size adult. I mean, I'm six foot one and I do have enough room for my legs. All of the materials back here are super nice to the touch. You have USB type A and a USB C back here as well on either side. So if you're having kids or even just youth back here, you'll definitely have enough room. And for the third row, there's also a separate sunroof, which is pretty nice and it has a manual shade. So if people back here want to shade themselves, they can go ahead and do so. And I'll just show you what it looks like sitting behind potentially someone in the second row. I could easily do this for a good long road trip and this isn't even the longest version that is offered in the second row here it's a little tight sitting behind myself at six foot one but i still have enough room it's kind of similar to how it was in the third row for me and there's some sun, sun shades back here as well they are manual but super easy to use and very nice trim as well you can see there's a speaker behind here very nice door handle unlock and locking controls. And then on here, it also says Macintosh and some nice storage area in here as well. And here's a look at the other side there. You can really see that wood grain trim shining in the light there. And you also have access to this beautiful sunroof as well. 
So here's a look at the storage area here in the middle between these two captain's chairs. Up top here, we kind of have like this wood grain material. And if you fold this back, there's a small storage area, maybe it could fit like a wallet or something like that. A USB type A as well as a USB type C charger. Flip that on back here. And then if you push here and open, there's a super deep cubby here that could fit a hydro flask. It is so deep in there. And then some standard cup holders in front of that. And then there's actually a screen. If you tap that, you can turn on the climate control for the rear. This even has heated seats for the second row, which is pretty cool. There's also two vents. There's a USB type A, a USB type C on either side. It says Grand Wagoneer just in between all of those USBs. There's also an AC adapter and a DC adapter down there as well. All right, so let's take a look at the passenger side door panel. Let's start with this black trim up here that is pretty plush and then a pretty nice wood grain material here as well. There are automatic seat controls. You can adjust the headrest front and back as well as down and up. And then you can also adjust the upper portion of the back, the lower portion of the back, move the seat forward and back. And then this small little black button in the center here will adjust the thigh extension. And down below from there, there's the Macintosh sound system and some more storage. Now, as we make our way into the vehicle here, there's a nice Grand Wagoneer sill. You can barely see it, but it is there. And then also you have this small area here that says Grand Wagoneer, and that will illuminate at nighttime, which looks pretty awesome. Nice carpet floor mats, nice Grand Wagoneer logo right here with this nice wood grain. Looks pretty cool. A decent sized glove box. Some pretty soft touch material on the dash here in front. And these seats are heated and ventilated. And this black leather looks pretty nice. You can kind of see some stitching there. Looks pretty good. On the driver's side door panel, it's pretty much the same exact materials, except we have a little bit more switches here. All four windows are automatic, which is pretty nice. There are all of your automatic seat controls here, a decent sized area for some storage. Here's your Wagoneer logo and Grand Wagoneer logo here. Rubber pedals on this side. All of the light controls are housed right here and these beautiful black leather seats that are heated and ventilated. On the inside, we have this same center console area we saw in the second row here, and it is pretty nice. Small area right here, have USB A and C, and there is a small compartment that kind of goes back just a little bit further as well. You can definitely fit some cell phones in here. Close that on up. And if you push here, it'll open right on up just like the one in the rear. And it is very deep here. And then in front of that, there are some cup holders right here. Pretty decent size. And you can also close this area right here. And you have this nice wood grain material. Now here's a look at the center area here, starting with the shift lever. And this will illuminate at nighttime. On the left side, there's all of the drive modes. There's rock, sand, mud, snow, auto, and sport mode. And then below from that, there's your four wheel drive. On the other side, there are different ride heights that you can adjust to just by using this lever right here. And you also have a hill descent button there as well. Now up from that, you do have a pretty nice screen here. You can control your climate as well as your seats. You can also use the massage settings there if you wanna turn that on. You can adjust it from high, medium, low, and the specific area you also want that to be at. And then you can also adjust the rear climate from here as well, or just turn off the screen. And if you wanna lift this screen up, just push this small button right here. And that will reveal a wireless charging pad, multiple USBs, and there's also a 12 volt DC adapter down there as well. And you can just push this button and it'll return. And the rest of your buttons are located here as well. So on this panel here, there are more options to control the AC or the climate. And there's more options on the side here. This has heated and ventilated seats, as I mentioned earlier. And you can control the specific zone by tapping here. This also has a heated steering wheel that you can toggle with three different modes. Now for the center screen, this does have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. I primarily use Apple CarPlay and this section right here that says vehicle. That way I can quickly turn on the surround cameras do right now and so you can see the surround area right here 
And you can also choose all of the different views that you would like. Hit the exit button here. And you can also quickly just turn on your rear view camera if you would like. You can also fold the third and second headrests or turn on the power side steps. So while still being inside of this vehicle tab here, you can hit settings and this will go through a lot of the settings in the vehicle if you would like to, anywhere from the suspension to the brakes to the lights. You can adjust all of the lights in here as well since this does have ambient lighting. I'll kind of show you what that looks like. There are only a few different colors, however, but they still look pretty nice at nighttime. The start and stop button is located right here. And looking at the steering wheel, there's a nice Grand Wagoneer logo right there in the center. And this steering wheel is very comfortable. It's, la it's wrapped in leather. It has a gear limiter down here. You can limit the specific gears you would like. There's a nice little chrome piece down here. On the right side, there are all of your adaptive cruise control settings. You can set cruise, adjust the distance, all of that good stuff. And if you would like to customize this nice digital instrument gauge cluster, you can do so with all of the buttons over here besides your phone buttons here at the top. All right, so I'll just quickly run through some of the different orientations you can have here for the digital instrument gauge cluster. First off, I'll just hold right here and it'll show you an analog version of what was just being displayed. And then you can also have this version if you would like. I'm gonna go ahead and return back to the digital version right there. And so you can adjust pretty much every area you would like. You can adjust this area right here as well as this one here and here. I primarily like it on this screen right here. I think that this is the easiest. But if you push this small button right here, this will bring up kind of a menu here and you can just quickly select which you would like to see. So if I select that, there now I am looking at my tire pressure and I can just quickly roll through everything that is needed here. You also have some more information here and you can scroll to the left and the right to see more information. Continue on down, service information, and then you can enter the screen setup and this is where you can adjust all of those things that I mentioned. And lastly, here's a look at the head-up display. It is customizable where you can adjust the height, the brightness, and information such as the navigation. All right, so it's time to take out this beautiful Jeep Grand Wagoneer. I'm super excited, man. This thing is so comfortable to drive, especially with its adaptive air suspension and whatnot. Man, it is just a beauty. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it into sport mode here, and we're gonna do a zero to 60 just real quick. But before we do that, I just kind of want to talk about some of the, the other things with this vehicle. So visibility wise, the visibility is okay. I think where this A pillar is sitting here and over there, it's a little tough to see pedestrians, especially because of how big these mirrors are. I mean, these mirrors are absolutely massive. I literally find myself ducking just to make sure that I'm not going to hit any bicycle, bicyclists or pedestrians or anything like that. So let's go ahead, we'll do a zero to 60 real quick. I'm in sport mode already. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, there are a bunch of different drive modes. There's rock, sand, snow, and auto, but we're gonna do a zero to 60 in just the standard sport mode and I'll brake boost it as well. Oh. This thing is actually pretty quick. This is running a 6.4 liter V8, and you can really feel it, and you can hear it too. I think it sounds pretty good, even though I think it's pretty well insulated inside here, it still sounds very good. So there's a bunch of other stuff with this vehicle. I mean, it's got the head-up display that works very nicely. At nighttime, this thing is just absolutely beautiful. Um, this is really competing with a Cadillac Escalade for sure, and I'm kind of pressed that I might get one of these instead just because of how much room there is and how comfortable everything is um, they really did a fantastic job with this vehicle so as far as handling it handles pretty well even though it's around 8,000 pounds and it's a pretty long vehicle as well it I, i'm actually very surprised it almost handles a little bit better than uh, i just recently got out of a middle trim maserati i feel like it handles just a little bit better than that 
but maybe because of the adaptive suspension and stuff like that, it's doing a little bit better job, but I would expect it to be a little bit more boaty. And the handling is very smooth, is very luxur luxurious, just as you might expect for something in this segment. So I really have no complaints overall. This is just a really nice vehicle to drive. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed my review of this 2023 Jeep Grand Wagoneer. If you did, please consider subscribing. Please consider at least liking the video. It would mean so much to me. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.